how's it going everybody I literally just sat down I just got home and uh, interesting night at work Inter ah, interesting night first off I had to tell somebody to leave the premises um, I didn't go outside I walk on a cane. I'm not intimidating. So I went to the door, put my hands on the bar, put my cane out of sight. I was like, <laughs> they look up and I'm like, and they left. It's nothing too exciting there. And then uh, I was doing some paperwork. And um, I was doing some paperwork after I. Uh, had my cigar in the other video I'm uploading today. I was doing some paperwork downstairs because I was doing my cigar video upstairs for some reason. And <clears throat> clipboard clip. Put the, the paper was in the clipboard sideways so I could write because that's the way it's laid out. I was going to I was going to take out the paper while slipping the pen underneath the clip so it doesn't go anywhere. And as I'm doing this. The clip slams down on my fucking finger and rips a chunk of flesh off. Hey Simba. I, yeah, I lost a chunk of my finger. A chunk. From a clipboard. The fuck? Don't, I don't know how or why. But I had to... But, uh... I had to, uh, clean it up in the bathroom and bandage it. Luckily I know luckily I know what I'm doing when it comes to injuries. I don't know why I do. Maybe I watch too many doctor shows. But as you can see, this bandage is completely white, which means I was successful at stopping the bleeding underneath a secondary bandage before wrapping this one up for pressure to stop the bleeding. So I did very well, but it's throbbing. And it hurts. I might need stitches, but I'm probably not gonna get them because fuck the hospital and fuck doctors. Because that's expensive as hell. And I don't mind fucking scars. Really don't. The tip of this tattoo has a scar. I don't care about scars. Um, so yeah, I lost a chunk of my finger last night. That's one hell of an interesting night, and then, um, I had to talk to my boss about the shit that went down the other day, Monday, where, uh, the guy on the weekend shift didn't do his job completely, and I overreacted. That's a very, it's a very good way to put it. I really overreacted. I had no reason to react the way I did. But yeah, I'll admit... <clears throat> And then everyone there has a right to uh, call me on the bullshit that I pulled. And um, I'm now on probation for everything because I caused the scene. And honestly, my boss wouldn't have done anything if it wasn't for that he has to report to a higher up who doesn't like me. So she put me on probation I have a 30 day probation. If I fuck up once, I'm fired. I like this job. It allows me to work with a cane. Not many other jobs will let you do that. They see the cane and be like, haha, no. So I'm gonna try my best not to fuck up. And, <laughs> And, um, unfortunately, when checking the cameras, it looked like I was sleeping, because literally, I just sit here like this with my phone for hours checking the cameras to see if anyone's outside. So it looks like I was sleeping, because the inside footage, it's motion detected, motion detector, so the fo there was no footage for a few hours, because I was just sitting there. I wasn't moving. Except for, like, this. Occasionally. So it looked like I was sleeping on the job when I wasn't, but my boss knows this. Unfortunately, <clears throat> the higher up saw knows, or 
the higher up doesn't like me. So she, she, I'm just lucky I didn't get fired on the spot. This is what my boss said because we we both know how much she doesn't like me, and it's really hard to get her in a good day. And apparently, he got her in a good day when he had to report. Everything. Fuck. So yeah, I'm on probation. 30 day probation. Starting today, I believe, because I just signed the paper. So 30 days from now, if I don't fuck up, I'll still have my job. If I make a single mistake, I am fired. And I have been there for two years. Closing in on three, March. March will be three years. Yeah, about March. Maybe a little before March, but right about March is um, my three-year mark working there, and I really don't want to be fired, and my boss really doesn't want me to be fired. He says I'm one of the best fucking workers he's ever had, even with my um, limitations. So, yeah. Also, because of the uh, fight, it was an argument, whatever. Because of it, I'm not supposed to stay at my work past 8 a.m. And I don't even like staying past 8 a.m. other than I bullshit with my coworkers, and it's more, we get a, we get along really well. We bullshit and we laugh. We make fun of each other. We laugh. We have good old time, but at the same time, they're working. I'm not so. You gotta stop that. And I mean, I don't, I try not to, like, talk to them when I see them actively working, but when they're sitting around having a smoke waiting on stuff, yeah, I'll bullshit with them. But at the same time, I, there's no point for me to be there that long. So I completely understand leaving at 8 a.m. I get off at 7, so it's enough time for me to get my coffee and wake up enough to go, to get home. <sighs> Honestly, I'm a little fucking nervous. I've never been on such a t t t t strict, um, never been under such a close watch at a job before. Then again, this is only my third, my third, um, official job. I've done this. I used to do warehouse work where I broke my body every day, lifting extremely heavy boxes. Um, I lost my train of thought because I just got a text message. Um, I used to literally kill myself every day lifting boxes that were way too fucking heavy for anyone my size to lift. And I'm a, I'm a big dude. No, my fucking phone's dying. I'm a big dude. These are broad ass shoulders. My jacket barely fits and that's meant for a bigger guy. Um, yeah. Fucking killing myself every day. Not to mention they'd park they'd park forklifts in there and not turn them off inside the truck we were unloading, so we were getting uh what was it called again? CO2 poisoning, maybe? Is that what it was called? I don't know. F fucking engine fumes basically. <clears throat> we were getting suffocated with engine fumes. Five to ten minutes at a time working there. Horrible job. For that, I had an unofficial job where I was volunteer work at the Goodwill, helping teenagers get jobs, helping adults get jobs, helping people use computers, helping them get their GEDs, helping them set up for uh, interviews, practice interviews. Um, yeah, I was, I was doing some great stuff, but it was volunteer, so I couldn't stay because I needed money. Before that, I was, <clears throat> before that, I was a wildlands, wildlands firefighter. That was a interesting job. No, 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 no. Um. No, I worked with my grandfather before the volunteer work where that doesn't count as a job. Working with your family. I did a lot of things. I did welding. I did 
machinery kind of stuff. Like I put I put shit together, did electrical work, I did plumbing work, I did computer work, data entry, did all kinds of shit, customer service, did a lot of shit with with my grandfather. Uh, honestly, the only reason we called it customer service is because he's not really good at words when it comes to people. He's good at doing his job, but he's not really good at talking to people. So he's like, hey, you talk to people. I'm like, my brain doesn't function 50% at any given time. <laughs> I'm really shit at words too, but okay. <clears throat> And then before that, I was the uh, Wildlands firefighter, and that was a that was a job. Did it for about a year, and uh, I don't want to do it no more. I won't get into that. I, I, I saw some shit out there. Fires are dangerous. That's all I'll say. And then, uh, yeah, that's my job experience. Three official jobs, two unofficial, back to back. And, uh, yeah, before that, I was, uh, I didn't do shit. And then there was high school, but between high school and that first job as a fire, wildlands firefighter, I didn't do shit. Sat on my ass all day. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I, I did that not too long after I got out of high school but yeah that's my work experience and um this being my third official job i really now that i've um gone off on a tangent i can actually wrap it around to my original point of conversation um this is my third official job i really don't want to lose it. i like this job i like the people there 99 percent of the people there it's like one or two i don't like one i don't like one I don't like. Everyone else, fucking really cool people. I don't want to, I don't want to get fired. And I don't want my fucking, uh, this ability to, um, keep me from working there. Degenerative nerve disease is horrible, but I do what I can. So, I'm going to go clean my bandage and, uh, I'm going to change my bandaging and clean the wound again, and if need be, re-cauterize it, because that's what I had to do. I literally lit the tip, literally lit the hole in my finger on fire, because when the clipboard came down, it scraped flesh off pretty deep. I saw some bone, so i got to go cauterize it again, maybe. If it stopped bleeding, that means I did the cauterization the first time pretty well. And if it still has some blood under the first um, bandage layer, then I need to cauterize it again if it's still bleeding. Which won't be fun because no one likes hurting themselves. I mean, people do hurt themselves and those people are in, in a bad place, but... Most people don't like hurting themselves. I mean, they can in situations that require you to, like, amputate an arm because it's trapped, like that one dude. Or was it a leg? I don't know. He was, like, rock climbing or some shit, and he got trapped. But, like, or if you've got a bad wound and you got to cauterize it like I did because I wasn't going, I wasn't leaving work. I had to talk to my boss this morning. I wasn't going, and I wasn't going to the hospital just because I got to, a medium sized wound in my finger. I mean, it's about the size of a. It's about the size of half a peanut. Half a peanut. It was like that big. It's actually a lot of flesh for the finger. I'll be fine. As long as I keep it clean, I'll be fine. And then again, <laughs> working and living with my grandfather, you learn to suck it up and fucking deal with it because that man has sandblasted the back of his hand and he didn't go to the hospital he just scrubbed it clean bandaged it next day scrubbed it clean bandaged it until it healed he also <clears throat> was burnt 
third degree tits to knees, his words, not mine. And he, uh, had, he, of course he had to go to the hospital for that. The fucking, um, boiler exploded on him. But, um, when he heard that, oh, you're never gonna walk again. Or, at least if you do, you're gonna be in a lot of pain. And, um, you're gonna have to stay here for a while. Hey, Dad, come pick me up. I'm going home. He went home. They freaked the fuck out. Like, what are you doing? You can't, you can't leave. He's like, I got this. And he just scrubbed his flesh clean every day till he bled, rebandaged. And now, the only problem he ever has, not walking, not sitting, it's when he goes to um, Korea, Japan, or China for his business. The only problem he has is if they, if he tries to sit cross-legged. So he'll sit with his legs to the side. That fucking man. <laughs> that man. That. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough man. Apparently I'm pretty tough too because I fucking caught a rise to wound when I could have easily just went to the hospital. Yeah, no, let's not do that. Let's not push my luck. My cat is now annoyed at me that I have not paid her any attention. So I'm gonna go do what I said with my uh, finger here. And uh, I'll see you all in the next video. Whatever I make, take it easy. Keep a Curtis signing out.